People call in sick for work that have a migraine. What the f has happened to us? The adrenaline rush you get out of making a lot of money is beyond your comprehension. It just is. It's like, it's like winning the World Cup day after day after day. You guys have read all the books. <laughs> Look at you now. First of all, Bill Gates doesn't hang. Warren Buffett doesn't chill. Jeff doesn't hang. Steve didn't hang. Dan doesn't chill. Only losers hang. Only losers chill. Top 10, top I got a top, top 10. 10. Top got my motivation high for my top, top 10. 10. Top got 10. to learn from the wise women and men. Need motivation? Watch the top 10 with Believe Nation. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and this channel was created to help you overcome the number one challenge that is holding you back, a lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know there's something more inside you too. You have Michael Jordan level talent at something. So today, let's learn how to outwork everyone, push yourself, and not let your fear stop you with Dan Pena and my take on this top 50 rules for success to give you the confidence, motivation, and belief that you need. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one. Outwork everyone. Actions have consequences. There is no work-life balance. There's work-life choices and they have consequences. I still work 60 or 70 hours a week and I haven't had to work for 35 years. People ask me, Mr. Pena, how do you get up every morning if you don't have to work for 35 years? I'm a barrio bad boy who lives in a 15th century historical castle like Disneyland. The successful kids that I coach that fly around in jet planes now, they're money not everything, the only thing that anybody can, keeps track of making a million, two million dollars a year, work like dogs, 120 to 140 hours a week. I'm gonna say it again, 120 to 140 hours a week. The high performance kids want to continue to learn. They find a mentor, somebody that is where they want to be today, and they mimic, model, copy them. Rule number two, push yourself outside your comfort zone. The way I continue to stretch myself at my old and tender age is I do crazy shit. Other than tripping over the chair, yeah, I do crazy shit. Uh, yeah, 2014, uh, this is just last year, I jumped out of the stratosphere in Las Vegas, 855 feet. Now I have artificial knees, artificial hip, artificial shoulders. I have no right long head bicep from bummed up from various things that have happened to me. So I should not be jumping out of an 855 foot tower that I've got to land like this. So my lovely wife says, Dan, why don't you go watch the people land? She's thinking, if I see them land, then I won't jump. No, I, I don't want to focus on anything negative, no negative shit. So I go up to the top and I jump. Well, I didn't land. On YouTube, we cut out the part of me falling on my head and rolling into the cement. We cut that shit out so it looks like it landed like this, but I didn't. I landed into the cement and because my knees couldn't take the pressure because I had full knee transplants a couple years ago, both knees. But I continue to do stuff like this to continue to push myself outside my comfort zone. And if I'm pushing myself outside my comfort zone in my 70s, it, it could be easy. Now I'm not suggesting any of you jump off buildings. I'm not suggesting any of those things. But what I'm suggesting is the older you get kids, and this is directed to the, the students here, the, children, the harder it is to push yourself outside your comfort zone. Because then you got a family, you got kids, you got a mortgage. You got your mother and father you're gonna take care of. You got a half, half breed, mongoloid idiot for a sister. What? Life catches up with you. Rule number three, don't let your fears stop you. You can't hit a home run unless you're in the batter's box and you swing away, right? Everybody understand that? Most of you have never been in the batter's box or on the crease.
So in that regard, you really, and I'm not giving you an excuse for not being more successful, but in that regard, I can cut you a little bit of slack because you've never put yourself in a position to succeed. But it's been out of fear. Everybody in this room has had an opportunity to succeed at something. But fear has kept you back. False expectations appearing real. Rule number four, overcome adversities. Well, we didn't know when I was growing up, I was born with peripheral neuropathy. Meaning the nerve engine in my hands and my feet were dead and dying. I.e., I'm uncoordinated. But they just said I was an uncoordinated fat bastard. They didn't, they didn't test for peripheral neuropathy back in those days. They said I was retarded. I was slow. I had OCD and ADHD, which they hadn't diagnosed in those days. They used to st stand me in the corner with a dunce cap. And if I turned, you know, dunce cap, one of those things, on your head. If I turned around, they put me in a closet. They take the dunce cap off my head, put me in a closet. Until my parents would come pick me up. I'd be in there four, five, six hours. I'd sh myself and piss myself. They wouldn't let me out. Then my father would pick me up and give me a beating again. Because the teachers and the nuns were always writing those days. Now just imagine if your little sensitivities endured that growing up. But it just made me stronger. Because it's not what happens to you in life, it's how you interpret what happens to you in life that builds your character, which translates ultimately into your destiny. Now I was a bad kid. You don't know anybody who who tried to kill his teacher. I did. I tried to kill my teacher. Fortunately, by the grace of Allah or somebody, I wasn't good at killing him at 11, 12 years old. Coming from the neighborhood I came from, there was plenty of guys that were better at than I was. I dropped an aquarium from the second floor onto the teacher who pissed me off. Kind of reminds me of Coach, actually. He looks kind of like that. <laughs> and he moved six, seven inches, and instead of hitting him in the head, caved in his clavicle, and his shoulder was down here. Now, if I had unfortunately killed that teacher, I wouldn't be here today. I would have gone to prison, but like that. So all these things that happened to me made me a stronger person. Also, if you want to have more self-love and confidence, check out my 254 series. It's free. The link to join is in the description below. You want people with a like mind and it, that are better than you, smarter than you, more intelligent than you to get on your bus. But no one does know initially, up front. You have to try. You have to swing at the plate. A kid like you, if you had to keep track of seven days a week, 24 hours a day, what you do. Rule number five, don't waste time. Now, when you measure your life, what you've accomplished, or the lack thereof, or how long it took you to discover that uh, you were pissed off and that, um, that um, you were going to subject yourself to an experience like this, um, you can think uh, how much time you do waste. And one of our uh, successful mentees, a Dutch guy, he said, you just uh, learn how to sleep faster, uh, which you really can't do that. But I mean, because when you realize, um, when you, you wake up uh, the first time and uh, you say, well, I'll go back to sleep for a little longer. Well, the, f the first time you woke up, you probably can get up. And you don't need to go back to sleep for a little longer. Rule number six, toughen up. I didn't believe in being homesick. I got gangrene in my hand when I was going to boot camp. And one of the last things my dad said, you never go on sick leave. Only wuss is going sick leave. I got gangrene, I almost lost my left hand, but I didn't go on sick, sick call, or whatever it's called. The, the officer of the day, which was a young second lieutenant, and I was curled up in my bunk, and he says, uh, what's wrong with uh, Pina? And my hand's all puffed up and green like this. It's all right, lieutenant, it's all right. I was in the listening man first. It's all right. They took me off and they glanced and they, I almost lost my hand. But my dad said, only wuss has gone sickly. Now people call in for work because they got diarrhea. People call in sick for work that have a migraine. What the f has happened to us? 
Rule number seven, surround yourself with success. I'm just currently surrounded with kids, guys, young men that are on the same mission. This won't always be the case. When you get out there in life, not an athletic life, it's very difficult to find a group like this. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Self-esteem is built the first seven or eight years of life. Who are you around the first seven or eight years of life? Mom? Maybe dad? An older brother? A grandparent? Right? So if you're lacking self-esteem, it's because of your family. It doesn't have to stay that way. It doesn't have to stay that way. Rule number eight, be selfish. You gotta be selfish. You, got, you want your needs more than their needs. Otherwise, you're gonna have a tough time. Not impossible, it'll take you, you know, I told you the longest, tw you'll take you 12 years. One of the nicest human beings in the world, it took him 12 years. He's a prince among men. He gets, uh, he gets honorary awards and shit for, you know, humanitarian of the year and shit like that. 12 years to close a goddamn deal. So he can take all those honorary, honorary, that bullshit, he can shove them up his ass. Because that's what they're worth. I never got a man, of, well, I got one man of the year, I, I stand correct. But a humanitarian of the year, I sure never got. There's probably some of you in this room that got some like that. And it's shit. That's what you get when you're 70, 75, 80 years old. If you've already got it, something, you did something wrong. Rule number nine, start taking action. So how possibly serious can you be about being an entrepreneur? How? Well, the guy in Chicago, well, that's too far, Miami, Florida. The guy in, in, in uh, Bunk, Mississippi, that's too far. The guy in, you all got a reason, right? Now I'm gonna show you, for those of you, I have a, a link on my uh, site. The two, the two most famous, in my opinion, the two most, most famous links are Deal Flow, where you find deals, and the second link is where do I get the f money? That's exactly what it's called. <laughs> Those two links on my site, free. They're the two links that are the least clicked on. The least. Some days I get two clicks. Some weeks I get five. Some months I get 20. Why would you come to my site if you don't want to know where the money is? I give a podcast on each, free on the site. This is on the site too. These are the sources. Because you're pretending to want to be an entrepreneur. You're pretending to want to create wealth. You're pretending. You're not serious. Rule number 10, outperform your best. Life attracts life. If you're a powerful, I don't even, that, oh, wait with me. My one weight with me, sorry. I bench 395 pounds back in the day. Why didn't I bench 400? Because my moron spotters into the college line. My spotters say, well, can you bench 400? No, I didn't. I never got close to that again. The best I ever benched after that is about 280, 382. That's my weight with me, sorry. I only have one. And I get um, um, sit down press 200 pounds. Sit down. Military press. That's, that's the, the extent of my uh, weightlifting. But when you find somebody, powerful people are attracted by powerful people, not just weightlifting, but because you stand, you do what you say, and you say what you do. When you go out to play in the next few days for the coaches, and, you, and they're going to expect all you can be. By definition, you have a contract. They're going to give you the best coaching they know how, and you're going to give them the best performance you know how. But that's not good enough for me. I want you to outperform. I want you to be better than you've ever been. And you've all got it within you. You've all got it within you. Rule number 11, play to win. You stop playing to win, and you start playing not to lose. Like an Army-Navy game. 
You're up 18 to six at halftime. You lose momentum. The game ties at 18-18 by the end of the fourth quarter and you lose in overtime because you stop playing to win the second half and you start playing not to lose. It's the same in business. Because you start worrying about the few pennies that you made and you start to sit on them like a mother hen. Most of the men and women in this room that have been in business stopped playing to win long ago. And they started playing not to lose. Rule number 12, take responsibility. When I got out of the military, I went and found people that were super successful, which meant men super wealthy, and I mimicked them. Aristotle, Plato, and Socrates started mentoring 2,000 years ago. Normally, this is a sh thing to say, you, can't say, you cannot take families without saying lies. For those of you that got their head screwed on straight, your parents did an all right job. For those of you that didn't, your parents fucked up. And if I've had parents and grandparents sitting here with the kids, two kids, and I asked the mother sobbing, the answer is, I did the best I knew how. You don't know what you don't know. If I went and asked your parents tonight, that's the same answer they give me. But you can't blame it on your parents because you're adults. To me, you're not adults because you the adult, the coach is barely an adult to me at 38. But I mean, because he's still a kid. You gotta take responsibility. The kids take responsibility for their own actions. Okay, I know you're not supposed to drink, but for those of you that have drunk before, and you get a hangover, or you drink too much, you either suck it up and go to class and go to work with, right? Or maybe you don't. Maybe the snowflakes now, they just roll over, go to sleep for two or three days. The high performance kids that I've had the privilege of training for 25 years and being around for 50 years all take responsibility for their actions. They don't blame it on somebody else. Rule number 13, work super hard. We just went through my records. I just started collecting social security this year. I didn't, that was my donation back to the government. I didn't, I didn't collect it. And I'm at the highest level you can collect. And um, the, when I saw my Social Security record, they have from the day, the first day I went to work was August the 10th, uh, 1961, the day I turned 16. That's when you could get a Social Security card. And I was a member of a union. I, I was a box boy at a market where they used to put the groceries in bags for you, okay? I got paid a dollar a six or a dollar eight an hour. Um, and so for between August 10th, my first day at work, I worked 21 days. I worked every day. My first check was $240. If you go through the numbers, I worked every day about 10 hours a day. If you, had, if you went, got sick, I took your shift. If you wanted to go home and get late, I took your shift. If you wanted to go to your ball, uh, son's ball game, I took your shift. I just took everybody in, and so they, you know, that was extra chef Pena. I mean, I, and, and I, and I, and then when school started, I used to work on the weekends, uh, and, um, I used to go there after practice. Nobody's got a job after practice because I saw my dad's work ethic. And i.e., the average guy that comes to the seminar works less than 40 hours a week. Some of you are internet scum. You know, four hours you want to work. Not a day, a week. And there's more of you than 80 hour a week, guys. But even if you average four and 80, that's only 42 hours a week. Some of you, not necessarily this group, brag, you work four hours a month, one hour a week, and you go into culture shock. <laughs> one third of you in the next two months is gonna get either pneumonia, can't get up out of bed, uh, and it's called stress. Especially the six packers, and the pill poppers are the first to drop. The 5% body fat are the, the big tubs of shit. Like we got a couple in here. Nah, well, I mean, you know, they just seem to roll with it. They just eat more, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, uh, the, the fit guys are the guys that fall like pretzels <laughs> because you're not used to working. And then what you're really not, you, you, you think the hours you work are work and they're not. And the weekly reports you're going to have to, uh, from the time you get up in the morning 
And of course, you lie to me, you lie to me. To the time you go to sleep at night, every hour on the hour, what did you do? When you see that, you are going to shit your pants and you wonder how you accumulated anything in your life. Rule number 14, congregate with winners. Tell me your friends and I'll show you your future. Okay? You are the average of the five people that you hang with the most, that you chill with. In your case, they're midshipmen, right? Now, I'm sure there's all midshipmen are great midshipmen, but there's some that are better and some that are worse. That's life. And so the, first of all, Bill Gates doesn't hang. Warren Buffett doesn't chill. Jeff doesn't hang. Steve didn't hang. Dan doesn't chill. Only losers hang. Only losers chill. Show me your friends and show you, uh, show you your future. You have to disassociate yourself with whomever that you're part of. Um, Olympians congregate with a fellow Olympian. World-class athletes congregate with world-class athletes. Rule number 15, don't be afraid of the unknown. I practice one hour, at least one hour. For every hour that I'm with you, I practice an hour before you got here. So I practice 50, 60 hours. And I could give this seminar in a coma. Literally in a coma. Because I know your questions. They're all the same retarded, meathead questions. <laughs> and they're all based because you're afraid. False expectations appearing real. You're afraid, you know. It's the unknown you haven't done. Uh, th I think three people asked him how he gets out of his comfort zone. Okay? Um, the, um, and you're not going to be, now. some of the guys go and skydive and jump, you know, on, uh, you know, uh, bungee jump, like stuff that I've done in recent years. But um, he, he's, he was afraid <coughs> of asking, see, before he had a big company behind him with a big balance sheet. That's a lot different. We've had guys from Goldman Sachs come in here and they, they piss their pants because they're not wearing the, the Superman Goldman Sachs shield and they never had to worry about the money there. Well, now he's, you know, now will they still say yes to me when I don't have, you know, the big company behind me? And, um, and now for those of you that have never been with a big company, never had a big balance sheet, you don't know, but it, 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 I've never really had that either. So, but he is going out there, he's pressing the flesh with people that would normally um, say no. But contrary to what you believe, or what you think, or what your in-laws told you, not that many people are out there asking. Rule number 16, take action. My system is based on mentoring. Josh Kim was mentioned in the, uh, in the introduction. Josh Kim is a young kid, 17 years old, when he came to me. And today he's 21, flying around in a jet plane. Now, I was asking some of the staff earlier, what is it that resonates about Josh, other than the fact he's 21 and a lot of you kids are 21, or close to it, close enough for government work, right? It's because you see what he's done and what you haven't done. To accept the QLA methodology, you have to say, let's say for the people, the old gits that are maybe in their 50s, or maybe even have somebody in the 60s or in your 30s, you've wasted your whole life and that's a tough pill to swallow. How is it a 17-year-old kid can come to me, homeschooled, no high school, no G level, O level, A level, no university? His only claim to fame, and I'm not demeaning it, he was an Eagle Scout. And now he's a multimillionaire. He's also not a teenager anymore, he's 21. He had his 21st birthday at the castle. He came back to the seminar last August. That's what you can relate to. But the difference is, and as you'll see as we go through the slides, he pulled the trigger. You've been deluded, misguided into thinking, going to lectures like this, listening to podcasts, reading books, is taking action. Well, that's nothing! But Procrastination, you weak, weenie. Don't you see it? Don't you get it? Rule number 17, choose your friends wisely. 
show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Most of your friends, most of the people you hang and chill with are worthless pieces of shit. Should have rolled down the inside of their mama's leg. Never been born. And contrary to what you think, everybody doesn't deserve to be alive. That is horseshit myth. Instead of 7.5 billion people, we should have about 500 million people. Unfortunately, not all like me. Sally said it would be a hell of a world if everybody's like you, Dan. Of course, my mother was telling me that a long time ago. And uh, the few people that I still associate with that I knew 50 years ago, I got five guys that you would consider friends. Two of them, one of them I met in 1956. One of them I met in 1957. Uh, one of them I met in 1959. And then the other two in 62. That's it. I don't have any more. And now they're getting old and feeble with their problems. Friends are problems. Because, you know, my dad's definition of a friend. Okay, and we're just going to, there's three people here, and I call you first, and I say, um, uh, my mother's name was Amy. Amy's dead. You say, you don't ask how she died. Okay, I'll get the truck. I call the next guy. I'll get the chainsaw. I call the next guy. I'll get the lie. Lie, you, you, know, you put it in the grave, and it disintegrates the body. That's my dad's definition of a friend. Many years ago, a good friend of mine, uh, the, uh, who's a lawyer, uh, we're having some people over for drinks, and um, I come to the, he comes early. We used to call him Tarlo Tentative because he could never get the time right, but then he was early about an hour, and I show up at the door bloody in boxer shorts and a t-shirt. He assumed that I had chopped up my wife or killed her or something. He told his wife to get in the car and go shopping and leave. <laughs> and he comes into the car, rolls up his sleeves. Okay, where, 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 where's the body? Rule number 18, be ruthless. I don't care what you think about me. I don't care what you say about me. All I care is you get the ball over the goddamn goal line. Not once, <laughs> not twice, as many times. I want you to run up to the score. Do they still run up the scores? No, oh, yeah. I want you to run it up. I want you to be a legendary, legend in your own mind. 107 to zero. Beat them. And when you got them down, beat them until their brains come out of their skull. And then keep beating them. So then the next team you play will be afraid of you. Just like many years ago, Constantine Karatsos, the CEO of Onassis Chicken Lines, said, smart people are afraid of you, Mr. Penny. Only stupid people challenge you. Because when I say I'll do whatever it takes, I mean it. If it means I gotta tune you up with a baseball bat, or take your company away from you and put you in starvation. When I say I'm gonna you up, I mean I'm gonna you up. It's not metaphors. And the big guys that I've alluded to, the Jobs, God rest his soul, who I knew, the Gates, etc., Elon Musk, Bebo, are all the same. So if they're all like that, success leaves clues, kids. If they're all like that, and you're not, and most assuredly your parents aren't, what does that say? Rule number 19, have a dream. The kids that do get it, and for the kids that are my mentees in the audience, they had a dream. Josh had a dream, and when we show you what Josh's dream was, a few slides from now, you will not believe what a young kid, 13, 14, 15, 16 years old, before he came to me, dreamt of. But that was my dream. And 17 months later, I made it my reality. From an East Los Angeles barrio bad boy who got in a lot of trouble, arrested, thrown out of school, and for those of you that have looked at my website, you know the story probably better than I. Strange times in which, in which we live when old and young are taught falsehoods in school, and the person that dares to tell the truth is called at once a lunatic and fool. Rule number 20, fight for yourself. This is a message to the individuals that are part of the, uh, uh, the secret Facebook account that is um, trying to disrupt uh, my mentees. Uh, um, Shane and Chen uh, are uh, asking you for commentary up to 5,000 words that say, what's wrong with the QLA program? That's fine, it's, it's, it's your discretion, you can do whatever you want. But I'm here to tell you a couple of facts. Shen got thrown out of the program as a deadbeat. Uh, I don't know Shane, but Shane seems to 
have a bug up his ass about finding out information about the program. All he's got to do is attend. Uh, or he can get the information from Shen. Shen attended. The, uh, but a, a couple of notes uh, that you should understand. You've all signed an NDA. Signing an NDA and when you're part of a fraudulent project makes the NDAs null and void. So any NDA you sign with Shen, Shane, or anybody else are not legal. Uh, if you disrupt in any way, shape, manner, or form, my mentees moving forward, or this castle seminar, or anything to do with QLA, I will hunt you down and litigate you into the ground. I will hunt you down and litigate you into the ground. This is not a threat, this is a common fact. I will protect my interests, I will protect my QLA brand, I will protect the $50 billion man brand viciously. For those of you that are looking to cross swords with me, I'm ready. Come and get me. Rule number 21, love yourself. I listen to my own self. Sally coming into the office, I'll be crying. <laughs> God damn, I love this shit. <laughs> <laughs> How good can I be, God? Jesus Christ, I can't get much better, God. Allah. I love listening to myself talk. I fucking adore, I, I, I really adore myself. <laughs> you can't love anybody unless you love yourself first. And that's self-esteem, self-confidence. Um, some people even should say it translates over into self-awareness. I don't know about that. That's a little airy-fairy for me, self-awareness. Um, but nobody where I grew up talked about self-confidence. Um, a lot of the kids, a lot of the... The street gang guy, they, they have self-confidence and they, and they really don't have that much self-esteem. That's why they join gangs. But they have self-confidence to go out and fight people and, you know, you know, piss in your face. Not literally piss in your face, but I mean piss in your face. And uh, the, um, the current generation, um, actually about a generation and a half, just doesn't. Rule number 22, play to win. For those of you that have ever started a business from ground zero, dollar one to dollar five thousand is geometric growth. Dollar one to a hundred thousand in revenue is geometric growth. Dollar one to a million dollars in revenue is geometric growth. Then what happens to you? You stop playing to win and you start playing not to lose. Like an Army Navy game. You're up 18 to 6 at halftime. You lose momentum. The game ties at 18-18 by the end of the fourth quarter, and you're losing overtime. Because you stop playing to win the second half, and you start playing not to lose. It's the same in business. Because you start worrying about the few pennies that you made, and you start to sit on them like a mother hen. Most of the men and women in this room that have been in business stopped playing to win long ago. And they started playing not to lose. Rule number 23, take action. You guys have read all the books. <laughs> and look at you now. <laughs> what good has it got you? You've listened to all the podcasts. With the greatest respect, I didn't know one single speaker on the agenda for this event. I told Jason last night, not one. Doesn't mean they're not great guys. Doesn't mean they don't know what the fuck they're talking about, but I never heard any of them. You read all the podcast, you re read all the stuff. See, you've been deluded, bullshit, into believing that reading is taking action. You've been deluded into believing that listening to a podcast is taking action. It's not, the only thing that's taking action is pulling the trigger. Take action. Rule number 24, don't dwell over rejections. Some of you, myself included, have been rejected. Uh, I talked about my 1981 experience here where my deal fell to shit and I had to pay a half a million pounds, which is about a, 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 a million dollars of money I didn't have. Hence, I came up with uh, delayed fees. Um, the uh, rejection is part of the process. The kids, you've heard say it's a numbers game. That's their way of saying you're going to face rejection. I mean, Bert and, 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 and Bill can tell you about the, the times they tried and weren't successful. And um, 
but um, the one, the only real guarantee I can make is that if you don't keep swinging at the plate, you don't keep trying to hit it for six, uh, you don't keep lunging towards the goal line, you, you're never going to do it. Rule number 25, set your expectations higher. There's a guy out there that's still talking about his $1.7 million he made 35 years ago. Some of you has been to his seminar. Well, $1.75 million 30 years ago, 35 years ago. Well, today it's about, uh, uh, you know, maybe it's 2 or $3 million. But you will never surpass your wildest expectation. You will never surpass. And when we do goals tomorrow, you will never surpass your wildest, I mean your wildest expectation. Now, remember when uh, Cassius Clay, before he became Muhammad Ali, I'm the greatest, right? He was telling everybody. Now, he didn't really believe that, but it was part of his shtick, okay? I really do believe I'm the greatest, okay? But the, and he went around uh, uh, flapping his mouth, and there's been four or five athletes in the last 30, 40 years that have talked like that. But most of them are humble, right? Most of them are humble. And the, um, but he didn't surpass his wildest expectation. He attained his wildest expectation. You never, I guarantee, for those of you that wanted to make a million dollars or three million dollars, whatever the, the, the minuscule amount of money that you put down, or, you know, what's your goal, whatever, I guarantee you, if you hadn't come here, that's the very most that you'd ever make, unless you won the lottery or something. Rule number 26, be ready to sacrifice. A new test that we give now, uh, the super success test, um, the, um, we have a 98.2% failure rate. 98, I thought the success test at 95.6% failure rate was bad. But the super success test is worse. 98.2% of the people, and you've all taken the test, don't want to be successful. Whereas the excuse you gave about, um, for example, the snowflake test, was that, uh, well, I, I don't want to go to jail for hitting some guy with a lead pipe because he spit in my mother's face. Well, that's a f***ing cop-out. We both know it. If you stab your mother in the f***ing eye, you wouldn't f tune him up. Because you're a c You got no balls. So we, we made a 21st century test. Okay, so you don't want to go to jail for beating somebody up. You don't want to go to jail for standing up for your own human rights. Okay. You're a vagina, but okay, let's do a new test to see if we can separate the men from the boys, the, the women from the, the girls. And it was a super success test, and those questions are on a different end of the continuum. Those questions are, are you willing to miss your 16th birthday of your daughter, sweet 16? Are you willing to do a deal knowing you're going to miss Christmas and have to celebrate Christmas in January? Those were the questions. And the results were worse. 98.2% of you, let's call it 98, aren't willing to do a thing to be successful. Work long hours. Not take your daughter uh, to the university in her first day because you got a deal closing. Rule number 27, learn how to articulate. You have two times to make a first impression. First, how you look. And you're going to trick because you're going to dress better now. And the second time is when you open your mouth. And then no matter how you dress, when you open your mouth and you step on your dick, it does away with how you're dressed. And most of you, just as you don't know what fork to use when you sit down in a meal like you did last night, don't know what to say. And that's the real reason you don't, go, you don't go see your board members because you're afraid with an email, God forbid you use a text or uh, a text. I mean, you, this is eyeball, this is mano y mano, man to man, woman to woman, woman to man, whatever. And that's why you don't because you have no, you haven't learned to uh, articulate your, uh, what you want, your desires, your needs. Because we've got a generation and a half that's growing up hiding behind the computer. Rule number 28, get experience.
with all the computers and all the artificial intelligence, there's still no algorithm for experience. There's no code that you can write for 50 years of experience. There's no code that you can write for creating tens of billions of dollars. There's no code that you can write for having met five presidents, five secretaries of state. There's no algorithm. And as they said at Oxford when I spoke my first university about two and a half years ago, like in the front row here, some young man said that somebody that he was following had read 700 books. I didn't know there were 700 books on my subject matter. But the guy two seats down said, well, who would you rather have, somebody that read 700 books or somebody that's done 700 deals? Rule number 29, be strategic. 95% of all businesses worldwide don't sell. Why? Because the seller's trying to get rich off one transaction. He's trying to build his wealth off one deal. He worked 20, 30, 40, 50 years, and now he's trying to get wealthy. Wealth is built on a series of transactions, not one. 95% of all businesses don't sell because they're asking outrageously high price for it because they didn't get rich all the way up. This system that has created billions, tens of billions, it's the largest deal in recorded history from teenage phenom multimillionaires to the largest deal on the planet, $500 billion, is built on taking money out every time you do a transaction. And this system is realize means sell, and either through an IPO or a strategic sale to a big company, and so you're cashing out. And that's how we've done it since I've been coaching 25 years. And that's how um, uh, Amazon's doing it. Um, and that's how Google is doing it. And that's how Microsoft is doing it. And that's how, uh, and I could go on and on and on and name many more companies. Rule number 30, get good habits. Get mine, the greatest modeler, never to win a gold medal at the Olympics. An old friend of mine. He fell down in the 1968 Olympics. Speak about regret. That's a whole regret book. He said, Danny, he says, motivation gets you started. Good habits keep you going. For those of you that are going to weigh 50 pounds more in 10 years, and there's a couple candidates in here, I hope I'm wrong. It's, it's good habits of training that will keep you going. Now, I'm a believer, and I know I'm not in sync with modern technology. I believe in overtraining. The only thing you can sometimes overtrain is your head. If your head's not in sync with your body. If you think you're tired, guess what? You get tired. Rule number 31, become fearless. See, if you're trained as a kid like this, you have no fear. You have no fear. People say, why am I fearless? Well, I'm going to show you one of the reasons. Because that's me when I'm 13 years old with Jackie the Lion, my dad exposed me to a lot of rough shit growing up because he wanted me to have a pair. My mother's off camera here on the left in hysterics, screaming and yelling because the lion had just put my head in his mouth. That's the MGM line, though, you know, the one on the beginning of MGM. I've been doing stuff like this since I'm a little kid. Once you become fearless, life becomes limitless. I'm not going to ask you, one of the homework assignments we have, it's online, is what are you afraid of? Some of you have a longer list of what you're not afraid of than what you're afraid of. Why? Because you saw what your parents were afraid of. You saw what your grandparents were afraid of. You saw what your older brother was afraid of. Rule number 32, don't let words control you. This is a, um, a tweet from Warren a long time ago. Um, you will continue to suffer if you have an emotional reaction to everything that is said to you. True power is sitting back and observing things with logic. True power is restraint. If words control you, that means everyone else can control you. Breathe and allow things to pass. Remember, it's not what happens to you in life. It's how you react to what happens to you, and that's what he's saying here. 
Uh, now, this was early in his career when everybody, uh, not everybody, mo a lot of people, he, everybody wanted to know what his father, how come your father didn't put money in this deal? What does your dad think of this deal? Okay, and so he was living in the shadow of his very successful investment banking father. Uh, and plus, he had to learn how to sell, uh, et cetera. And, the, uh, and you know, people said, you know, if your dad didn't put, I can only imagine, if your dad didn't put money in this, Warren, you know, why should we, more or less? And he got over that. And uh, he learned to, to, to say to himself, it's not, you know, it's how I interpret or how I react to and interpret what they say. And he obviously has gone on to be uh, arguably the greatest investor of all time. Rule number 33, get experience. For me, there's no compression algorithm for experience. The coders have not figured out how to write an algorithm for experience. You cannot write an algorithm for my 50 years of experience. You cannot write an algorithm of the tens of thousands of deals I've looked at. You can't write an algorithm for the thousands of financial presentations I've made. There's no algorithm for that. And currently in the industry, there's nobody that has the sweat on my balls. I lost, taking a shit this morning, more financial acumen, financial brains, than the industry has currently on the planet. Rule number 34, be enthusiastic. I can remember the first day I made $10,000 in a day. I can remember the first day I made $100,000 in a day. I can remember the first day I made a million dollars in a day. And whenever, I don't need it now, but whenever I need to resurrect my enthusiasm, I just flash back to one of those days, and I remember the day, first time I made $100 million in a day. And those experiences put the best sex you ever had, it pales into complexion. It just doesn't exist. I mean, that's why these workaholic maniacs are workaholic maniacs. Because the adrenaline rush you get out of making a lot of money is beyond your comprehension. It just is. It's like, it's like winning the World Cup day after day after day. Or whatever the uh, metaphor for you, you know, if it's not the World Cup, it's whatever. And I mean, and then once that gets in your blood, you, you know, it's, it's near impossible to get rid of it. And that's a good thing. And then, then it's your job to instill that same enthusiasm into the people that report up to you, your directs as they're called. And, um, and then the next generation, they instill it in the next generation. And so, you know, I, have, I, I personally have a lot of the kids, the you guys, that are, that are making, you know, pretty uh, big amounts of money. Uh, the, um, and, that, and, and that's my legacy. That's my legacy. Rule number 35, get tough. So Warren says this, uh, you know, but unfortunately, early in his career, he uh, suffered from gross, nas gross national happiness syndrome, GNP, because he wanted to make everybody happy. And you heard Margot, she wanted to, be, she's a pleaser. Now, most of you in this room have been raised by pleasers. At least one of your parents was a pleaser. Normally it's your mom. To make peace in the house, she put up with your dad's bullshit, et cetera, okay? And so that pleasing attribute, and I don't consider it an attribute, or that pleasing trait rubbed off on you. Now, my mother was a pleaser, but my dad wasn't home that often, so she didn't have to please him too often. My dad was gone most of the time. But that, it's tough to get over if you've been a pleaser all your life. And more women want to be pleasers than guys. It's the nurturing thing, having kids, you know, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and uh, this is not, a, this is not a, a formula or a model uh, to be a pleaser. And you heard Peter say it, when he got tough, things changed. You heard Deb say it, when he got tough, things changed. You heard Frank say it, when he got tough, things changed. You heard uh, Margot say it, when she got tough, things changed. And every single person you're going to hear, except for one, for the rest of the webinars, is going to say the same thing. But they all come out of the blocks, I won't say like mice, but they come out of the box with, a, you know, if you can win them over being nice to them, remember the word nice, I don't like, if you, if you can win them over, then, you know, why not? 
and you know that old saying, uh, you, uh, uh, you catch more uh, flies with honey. Uh, I have some bullshit. Uh, than molasses, or there's some bullshit. Well, that's bullshit. That's for molasses and flies and honey. That's not here. When they respect you, they come on your board. When they respect you, the banks lend you money. When they respect you, they put in equity money as they did twice with Peter. Respect is the operative word, not love, not even like. I, I don't even want to ask uh, Peter if his board likes him. But now he's leading them to victory. Now their equity shares is worth something. So they may not like him at all. And a lot of people don't like me, but they respect me because they know that I'm a, I'm a rainmaker. I know how to make money. Rule number 36, surround yourself with the right people. You can get the right people. And you will never get billionaire status unless you surround yourself with a lot of the right people. Because you can't do it by yourself. You can't. And um, all these, you know, these teams of these great companies, uh, Google and, uh, and the like, have great teams. They have great teams. And, um, and then it's a challenge to how do you continue the team? How do you continue the enthusiasm? Rule number 37, always be prepared. And all these preparations and we're talking, the dream team, I still prepare approximately one hour for every hour I talk to you. I go through the slides, I change the slides for the guys that have been to the seminar in the last couple of years. It's not the same seminar that they went through. We have more webinars now, we have new webinars. Uh, so I'm always practicing, I'm always preparing. The, uh, and so should you. you. You should not get complacent and think the same pitch that you used uh, you know, three months ago is gonna work today. And in certain areas, especially in IT, and especially in artificial intelligence, there are waves, there's movements with huge change, just as the cloud is now, everybody understands, well, maybe not everybody, uh, but uh, a lot more people understand what you're talking about the cloud now than 10 years ago. Well, there are changes like that, so you, you have to keep up with generically, not specific. If there's something specific that's gonna change your industry, then you should know about it, and you should know about it through your accountants, your lawyers, uh, and your industry experts. So you don't just sit down after you learn a few words, you have to keep up. You have to keep up and keep prepared because you don't want to look like a doofus. You want to, you know, you're not going to be like a scientist, a bio scientist where you understand, uh, you know, uh, all the nuances, but you have to know the general movements of the industry. Rule number 38, stop looking for approval. There are no secrets, there are only mysteries. Nobody knows how to keep their mouth shut. And I mean, look at, and look at you. What I tell you, don't share anything. You all do. What am I, you know that section at the bottom of your, what am I not telling Dan? You know, I took a lot of shit from my brother and my uh, mother-in-law because I told him what we were doing. And I told you not to talk to the slag. I, talk, I told you, but you, you can't. It's so ingrained in you because you're looking for approval from these morons with 40 i not financial 40 iqs real 40 iqs it's so important to you to make you feel like a person because they they agree if they agree with you you're doing the wrong thing but you can't help yourself because all your life 5 10 15 20 30, however old you are you've looked for somebody else's approval for validation of your own life It's, it, I mean, it, it, it's so clear. It's so clear. And um, the KKR guys who came out of Bear Stearns a few years before I left Bear Stearns, and they were much, you know, much senior to me, um, knew how to keep their mouth shut. Because you just can't. Yeah. You just can't. Do you want somebody to, 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 to pat you on the head? Just like when you pat you on the head. Good job. And where, how's that system, where, where that system got you so far? Rule number 39, dress for success. The dress for success that we were talking about, these guys all look alike. They dress alike. They're, unless you're in Afghanistan or India or someplace where they raise, or they're wearing the, the natural clothes, 
they all dress like businessmen, more or less like you're dressed now. And you'll learn Churchill himself, uh, bow ties are in or out, it's okay. Uh, another one of my mentees, uh, and of course Klaus, uh, and of course then there's this guy, okay. Now, um, the, you're not supposed to dress like a clown, okay? And um, the, he's wearing a suit, yes. And when you're in certain parts of the country during the summer, they do wear white linen suits, yes. So the, he expanded on that into uh, where he uh, rented that station and he had his, his picture uh, taken there at the, at the station. I don't know where that is. I think it's someplace uh, in Eastern uh, Europe. But the operative is, remember, you only have one time to make a first impression. Now, for the gals, gals know how to dress businesslike. I don't have to teach them, okay? The, uh, although we have had some women, young women, that wear skirts up to here and low cut. Now, you get a lot of appointments dressed like that. But they're not the right kind of appointments to build a dream team. The, if you're looking for a husband, maybe maybe they're, 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 uh, they're the right kind. But it's really important how you dress and how you talk. Rule number 40, keep swinging. Remember, a turtle can only move forward when it sticks its legs out of the shell and its head out of the shell. And when is it most vulnerable? When it sticks its head and its legs out of the shell. So by definition, when he's taking the most risk <laughs> is when he's making the most progress. And... Um, and, it's, and it's, it's, it's difficult. For some of the kids, they never get it. But I've had guys, 10 years later, get it. Marcus got it almost immediately when he figured out what the English words meant. You know, he, he got it almost immediately. Um, of course, if he had understood from the beginning, he, you know, he'd be even more ahead than he is now. But the point is, the one guarantee is if you stop swinging at the plate, the only guarantee for sure is that you're never gonna put the, 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 the wood, the bat, on the ball and you're never gonna be able to hit it. And in the beginning, even though a few of the kids over the years have hit grand slam home runs almost the first time they're up to bat, most hit, in baseball terminology, hit singles, doubles, etc. In cricket terminology, they, they score only one or two points. They're not hitting it for six. Hitting for six is like a grand slam home run in, in baseball. Um, but the bottom line is that they keep swinging. And it, it's frustrating, and it can be debilitating, and depressing, or whatever the word you want to use, when you keep swinging and um, you're not hitting anything. I understand that. I understand that. But you're in... You're on the crease in cricket terms. You're in the batter's box in baseball terms. Um, so you're in the game. Most aren't ever in the game. N they don't even make it to the stadium. Rule number 41, be a high performance person 24 seven. Being a high performance person is a full-time job. Uh, Michael's known me 20, over 20 years. I'm like this when I wake up in the morning to brush my teeth. I'm like this when I brush my teeth before I go to sleep. I'm like this 24-7, 365, and I've been like this for the better part of 50 years. I'm always like this. I'm always pushing the edge of the envelope. And that's why, you know, I'm an overnight success. I've been doing this, I've been coaching 25 and a half years, but all of a sudden I'm popular as hell, uh, but I've been doing this for 50 years. I have the same habits today as I had 50 years ago. The exact same habits. But they're, now they're just ingrained in me. They're ingrained in me. Um, and for those of you that have never been around the high performance people like I just alluded to, the Warren Buffetts, Elon Musk, uh, God rest his soul, Steve Jobs, who I happen to have known, they were like this 24-7, 365. It wasn't an act. Now, I know Michael's like this all the time, but he and I both know people that are considered gurus, that they have a stage face, and they have their real face. They don't walk their talk. And part of being a high performance person is walking your talk. Walking your talk. Rule number 42, don't care what other people think of you. First cars on the planet were electric cars. And then 10, 8, 10, 12 years later, petroleum, you know, combustible uh, engines were invented. 
And so if we wanted electric cars, I mean, we could have, we, we could have been developing, instead of the last 15 years because of Elon Musk, uh, stuck his foot up the ass of the automobile industry, we could have developed some really, you know, tremendous automobiles um, based on electricity. Um, but again, it's survival of the fittest. Now they don't say sensitivity equals poverty, but you could see, you could see on the bottom, if it was there, sensitivity equals poverty vis-a-vis -vis all these magnets, uh, these guys, um, it, it just makes sense. There's no sensitive sensitivity in any shape, manner, or form of any of these guys. Now, what they don't say, but you can you, know, you can conjecture yourself, do they give a shit about anybody but themselves? No. And I'm going to just say this generically. And you, you care. Did they care what anybody said about them? No. If a newspaper said something bad, they bought the newspaper and sacked everybody. That's not in that film, but that's what happened. Did they care what anybody thought about them? No. And you can just go item by item from then till now. And if you even go back further to Till the Hunt and Genghis Khan, those guys, they thought even less. Rule number 43, implement I win instead of win win. I used to ask all these questions. How many of you believe in a win-win situation? And most of you would raise your hand and I'd come around in the 90s and smack you. There is no win-win. It's I win, you lose, moron. Win-win scenarios are preached by losers. Do you think Donald Trump believes in win-win? You think Winston Churchill believes in, believed in win-win? Now we know Adolf Hitler and Mussolini and Stalin for sure didn't believe in win-win. You have connoted high performance with goodness. In some cases, it couldn't be farther from the truth. It's about winning. And that's today's the first day of the rest of your life of learning how to win, win. Not some of the time, not most of the time, but all the time. Rule number 44, find your own motivation. Nobody's ever had to motivate me in my whole life. Nobody ever had to motivate Steve Jobs in his whole life. Nobody ever had to motivate Henry Ford, the first, in his whole life. And I can go down the list of every single one. My experience for the people that are the most successful, the Hall of Famers, the billionaires that I've made like God out of clay, I didn't have to motivate them. So what does that tell you about, forget this room. Let's say that you're an anomaly, this room. We know that's a lie, but I'm going to sound like the gurus, the guys that you followed here before, and lie to you a little. We know you don't need motivation, but what about those poor suckers that do need motivation? What did that say about them? Forget about it. Next. Nobody ever, my, and my kids, uh, our kids hate hearing this story, but one of the, uh, still one of the guys that I work for on, on Wall Street, for a Wall Street firm, uh, who says he gave me my first legitimate job, um, tells uh, the kids, and he's the godfather to one of our children. He says, um, we used to have, to have the security guards drag your father from the office and make him go home to sleep after five, six days straight. The security guards dragged me from the office. My kids hate hearing that. I used to take a sponge bath um, in the men's room and have my secretary go buy me a new shirt every day. 
And I used to have a proclivity of dropping shit on my ties, so I used to have to buy a lot of ties too. So then I realized if you buy dark ties, it doesn't show. You don't have to buy as many ties. But they had to drag me out of the office. I used to be able to go two, three days with no sleep. And I drank like, I drank in f all night. Guys, if you don't think you can f all night, guess what? You can't f all night. QLA is exactly the same. I can tell, no, I, I can tell no, hardly anybody in this room has ever f all night. But nobody's ever had to tune me up to get me to work hard. Rule number 45, get serious. Gallup did a poll in 2016, worldwide, 87.6% of all the people on the planet, 87.6% of all the people on the planet are unhappy. I'm gonna say it again, because I know they, these are Dutchmen, right? 87, <laughs> we'll, ju we'll just round it off. 87% of everybody that walks the face of the earth, 7.65 billion people are unhappy. So what went wrong? Well, I mean... Where did it start? Well, if, you're, if you were born in Biafra, I mean the odds are against you. But if you were born in the Netherlands, which a lot of you were, rightly or wrongly, you had a better chance, a better opportunity than the poor kid born in Biafra. Okay? What have you done with it? If anything. Most of you, I can just look... I wore my glasses. Normally, I like to uh, be filmed without my glasses. But I, last time, I didn't wear my glasses, so I couldn't see your faces. I've got my glasses on now, so I can see your faces. You know what I'm getting at. You have not used the opportunities, whereas the people in the third, fourth, fifth world countries uh, use those opportunities uh, to uh, be all they can be. And uh, money's not everything in the world, but money's the only thing anybody keeps track of. And so you can use that money that you make, uh, as the um, Gates are doing, in uh, trying to save the earth, save the world, uh, and uh, to do good. But it all starts, you have to be serious about it. Most of the people that are uh, engaged in personal development, for example, aren't serious. They're just, um, it just, it takes up three or four or five hours of their time a week, and, uh, and so they're fiddle farting around and they're not taking it serious. If you want to take it serious, you know, uh, Michael is a successful mentee of mine, and you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for, for uh, he uh, putting on these kinds of events. But he got serious about it a number of years ago, uh, and he's doing a lot of good. How many of you can say the same? How many of you can say that you're serious about it? How many of you can sa actually say that you're trying to be all you can be? Now, I, I won't insult you by asking you to raise your hand because you'll just lie. Rule number 46, don't wait to learn stuff. If we waited around, it's like engineers on assembly line of car. The car would never come off the assembly line because the engineers always want to finger fart with it to make it this, make it better, etc. cetera. Um, the, um, yeah, I mean, these guys uh, and the guy and, and, and the most successful guys uh, on, on the Hall of Fame, if they waited around to learn how to do it. The QLA model with one moving part, a motivated seller, is just one tool that then, then you leverage off of that one tool to learn how to do a bunch of other things uh, to get uh, the job done. And then after you've been doing it for almost 50 years like I have, I mean, there's, you have a whole um, toolbox. And as I said uh, at the regular seminar, you, this is the beginning of you being the uh, conductor of the orchestra. We're going to do this. We're going to use this. We're going to use this. And you're telling them what to do when you want them to do it. Remember, leadership is you having them do what you want to do, them to do when you want them to do it, not when... Um, uh, they want to do it because they will never be, uh, you know, uh, ready. Rule number 47, use trauma to make you stronger. In uh, the school, um, I used to be, uh, wear a dunce cap. They'd stand me in the corner, a dunce cap. You know, a cap that goes, uh, they don't have dunce caps anymore because they're not politically correct. A big, like a, like a big uh, beanie hat, and they stand me in the corner for doing something bad. And then if I turn around, they'd put me in a closet, a closet like this. I couldn't get in the closet with a dunce cap, so they put me in the closet until my parents came to pick me up. I would shit my pants and piss my pants and they wouldn't let me out of the closet. Can you imagine what would happen today if that happened to a kid in school? 
I should school the LA Unified School District for a billion dollars because of the trauma I went through. But the trauma made me rich because my dad told me sticks and stones can break your bones, but words can never hurt you. Now it's just the opposite. People commit suicide because they're unliked on Facebook. I don't, I can't relate to that. I'd go over to the house and punch the face in the, the, the father's, uh, knock all his teeth out. And now you, again, that's why it's not reversible. We are through as a race, but we're, you're going to die rich. Or you potentially have the ability to die rich. And I've been rich and I've been poor, and there's no comparison. But the world, you know, is just a... I remember um, people picking me up from school. I have shit in my pants. Just imagine the trauma. But my father said, it's not what happens to you in life, son. It's how you react to what happens to you in life. Didn't kill you, did it? Machiavelli said, that's what does not kill you, makes you stronger, right? Well, he didn't know Machiavelli, my dad. But it didn't kill me. I was embarrassed and I shit my pants because I was in the closet. I got in a lot of fights. Did a lot, and maybe that's why I dropped the aquarium on that teacher of mine. I tried to kill him. I got expelled three times, the last time from the entire school district. They didn't want me anywhere near that school district. And that's how we moved out to the valley, which then there was just wheat fields and shit. I got in trouble there. Well, you can find trouble if you want it, believe me. I am a living testament to that. But I used all those things to make me stronger. Rule number 48, don't be a pleaser. Unfortunately, the best way to show order and who's in charge when you buy a company is fire somebody the first day you take over. First day, doesn't really matter who. They used to tease me that I used to go down to the offices and every third office I'd fire. That's a little bit of an exaggeration. Maybe every fourth or fifth office. Didn't care. I don't believe in legacy knowledge in a company, especially today with the computers. 40 years ago, there was legacy. Some old fart knew how to do something, but not today. You can hire any dipshit out of, uh, out of university or out of a trade school or out of high school. You can teach them how to program. I mean, now for sure, there's no legacy. But because you're pleasers, you don't want to fire anybody. And you want to be liked. If you think when you buy a company that's 10,000 employees, you think those 10,000 people are going to like you, you're full of shit. They're going to be scared as whores in church that you, because they've got mortgages. They've got children. They've got mother-in-laws. They've, they've got to support. And they're afraid you're going to fire them. And why would they be afraid you're going to fire them if they were good employees? Because they're not. They're worthless pieces of shit. Rule number 49, build your self-esteem. The most important thing is self-esteem. Um, the people that we read about, the people that we uh, admire, uh, the Elon Musks, the Steve Jobs, the Warren Buffetts, etc., all have one thing in common. They have extremely high self-esteem. And, um, of course, you've heard me say this before, self-esteem is built the first seven or eight years of life. And, uh, unfortunately, we're with our parents the first seven or eight years of life. Uh, Ergo, uh, we don't have too much high self-esteem. But to build high self-esteem, and the way you build high self-esteem, if you're 25, 35, or 45, is to uh, be around, uh, surround yourself with other people that have high self-esteem. Uh, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. And so uh, you can still, you can reverse your childhood by who you associate with. How do you do that? Well, you find people that are, that are where you want to be, but they're already there. You're 22 years old, you're 32, you're 41 years old, and there's a guy or a gal who's 45 years old who is where you want to be. They've accomplished a lot of things. If you're into, uh, they're saving the world, they're using their money for good causes, go associate with those people. Be around those people. And they're easy to find. Uh, but you, they're not going to knock on your door. They're not going to come to your apartment or your flat and ask you, oh, can I help you? And, uh, and again, the best tool I've ever seen and it's almost been, it's like it was designed for this, is LinkedIn. It's the best social media tool 
uh, there ever was for what we're discussing. And uh, you can find these people. Now, just remember, everybody that's on LinkedIn, all the, I don't know, 20 million or whatever people that are on LinkedIn are all there for one reason. They're there because they want to do business, they want to meet people. Unlike some of the other social medias like Facebook uh, or Twitter or, uh, uh, and I don't even know the names of the others, but I mean LinkedIn, they're there for a common purpose. They have a common bo uh, bond. They have a common goal. They want to expand their horizons and it's a great tool. And rule number 50, the last one before a very special bonus clip is outwork them all. When I turned 16 in uh, August the 10th, 1961, is that right? Yeah, 61, born 45, 61. I had a job as a box boy. A uh, box boy, they used to put groceries in bags and, and then carry the groceries out to the cars of the ladies, women. And then if they gave you a tip, a quarter or something, was, you thought all your birthdays came at once. Um, and if you were a good looking guy like I was, you got more than a quarter. 16. Those were the good old days. Pre-AIDS and all that shit. Anyway. Um, about five years ago, because for, when I turned 65, I didn't uh, apply for my Social Security uh, insurance or whatever they call it in America. I only just did it last year at 72. And But uh, when you turn to 65, they send you all kind of shit. Uh, and so I'm looking at... Uh, and it shows from the t first paycheck I got in 1961, the month, first month that I worked, I, w I went to work at uh, August the 10th on my birth, 16th birthday because you couldn't drive. You couldn't have a Social Security number in America. I don't know what it is now, but you couldn't have a Social Security number. So I got a Social Security number on my birthday, and I worked at a uh, Vons market, uh, uh, Vons, uh, which is uh, like a Ralph's, or it's like a, a shopping market where you buy uh, food and shit. And I got paid $1.05 an hour. The first paycheck... I got was two, for $241. So roughly speaking, I worked 240 hours from August the 10th through August, how many days in August, 30 or 31? Through 31. So in 21 days, I worked 240 hours. First job I ever had. And I think my take home was about uh, 100 and 60 bucks out of 240. And if you wanted to go home, you had a headache, I took your shift. You wanted to go home and f your old lady, I took your shift. Uh, you, uh, you call, they just called me with their shifts, hours. Why? Because when my dad retired from the LAPD after 28 years of being a cop, in those days, if you didn't take your day off or your days off, they paid you for them. So at the end of his 28 year career, he had 710 days off that he hadn't taken. 710. And if you do the maths, as they say in this country, I don't know why maths is plural in this country. I have no idea why that is. But if you do the maths, he never took a day off his entire 28-year career. So what kind of role model did I have? And what kind of role models do you have? From 1971 to 1997, I, did, I worked every day for 26 years, including the day I got married. Every single day, from 1971 to 1997, I didn't take one day off. Now I've got a special bonus clip from Dan on how to not look for shortcuts that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the three-point landing questions. Let's go from just watching a video to taking action. Here we go. Question number one. What will you do to build your self-esteem this week? Number two, where do you need to stop looking for approval? And number three, what's one new good habit that you are committed to getting? And if you made it this far in a video and you are committed to making a change, I wanna celebrate you. Give me a hashtag, believe down in the comments as well. You've got generations of, you know, and I hate to keep saying, a vagina. I mean, I mean, when Peter gets up and tells his story, you know, I mean, he lived it. You know, and, it, and he knows, and he's been to the hardcore, and he's been to the seminar, and it just, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is f***ing weak. You just can't get it up. They're there on their back, they, you just can't, you can't get it up.
And even though I embarrass you, you still can't get it up. Because you know when you've gotten it up and you've seen somebody get it up, your, your, your grandfather was wiped out in the great lumber crash of 52. Or, you know, uh, yet somebody will get it up. And it's hard to pick, hard to pick them. It just is hard to pick them. In theory, everybody in this room ought to be able to do it. Theoretically, as, as, as our daughter said 20 years ago when she went, it's easy peasy, daddy. And it is, it's, it's dead simple. But you know, templates, cold calls. You've heard that from everybody so far. Yet, I can, you know, look to your left and look to your right, and they'll be gone. Why won't, they, why won't they find all the templates? Tell me. Meathead too. Tell me why. Because their brain thinks that there's a shortcut. Correct. Thank you. You're not as brain dead as he looks then. You know? Okay. That's exactly correct. Because everybody that you know that you've been to the seminar says there are shortcuts. And they teach you the shortcuts. And there are no shortcuts. Who else is producing billionaires? Nobody. There are no shortcuts. There's no shortcut to a gold medal at the Olympics. There's no shortcuts to a gold medal at the Olympics. The guy that took a shortcut got a bronze. If you want 50 more rules from the legendary Warren Buffett, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. I have missed things that were within my circle, and that's a terrible mistake. When I got out of school, I started selling stocks. I was 20 years old at the time.